Hi, I'm Shauna Fay, and I got to meet my figure skating idol from childhood, Kurt Browning, who has helped me transform into a drag performer named Skirt Browning. <laughs> I have the crush on Kurt Browning. <laughs> Well, of course, when you're in figure skating, you eat, breathe, sleep, live figure skating. So uh, my friends and I would all watch figure skating together and we would talk about, you know, who was doing what and who had the jumps and who fell that weekend in competition. And Kerr Browning, I think I speak for a lot of Canadians when I say he was just so charming um, and sweet. And of course, I was a young girl figuring out that boys were cute. <laughs> Kurt Browning with his blonde hair and he is just so charming and sweet that uh, I, I, I couldn't help myself. I saw a drag show in Winnipeg a few years ago and there was uh, one of the drag queens, her name is Joan Costalazza, she's kind of a legend. She was just having the most amazing time uh, having the most fun with her audience. She was incredibly glamorous um, and a free spirit. And I looked at her and thought, why can't I do that? I, I wanna do that. And then um, a drag class happened, the very first ever um, Prairie Theatre Exchange Theatre School. We're gonna host a drag performance class. And I'm like, okay, hey, now's the moment. So I signed up for the class, um, not knowing one little thing about drag and have been learning along the way and learn something new every time I perform or chat with other drag queens. <laughs> So when I found out that Stars on Ice was going to be coming to Winnipeg, uh, I decided, okay, I need to meet Kurt Browning because Kurt Browning's going to be here, Skirt Browning lives here, so I pitched to the CBC and they said yes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So uh, I basically pitched it to them that I should meet my idol and they were like, yeah, let's do that. Let's make that happen. So in May of this year, I got to go backstage at Stars on Ice and meet Kurt Browning in person. First off, he was like, oh my gosh, look at you. You look so amazing. He was like so kind and complimentary. And then we started talking a little bit about figure skating and like my history of figure skating and how did I become a drag queen. And he, he had another name. He's like, we really like Curtsy Browning as well. So think about that as a name. So he was like into the fact that I was paying homage to him. The other thing that he told me, which this is my nugget of wisdom um, that I'll always take away. He said that when you go out there, trust the audience, trust them that they're gonna love you, extend some faith to them, um, and then you can perform your heart out and then they will in turn return that love to you. But if you go out there with your defense up, um, it's kind of like an animal. When, when, you, when they sense a defense up or a fear, they, they may not trust. So that's what I try and do. Anytime I go on stage, I just wanna like be like, Kate, hey, you guys are gonna love this. Here it is and see what happens. So when you are coming in drag, you have to kind of figure out who you are. So I knew I wanted to be old school glamour. I wanted to be inspired by figure skating. I was thinking ice capades. And then I was trying to think of what is my name gonna be? And I, I just couldn't figure out a name. And then I went to, okay, what inspires me? Kurt Browning? Skirt Browning. It was a bit of a no brainer. Well, and the thing is too, it, like as a figure skater, uh, the deal was you go out there and you perform this thing for other people. So it's really very, very performance. Whereas other drag queens really do like inner work. I'm gonna explore my emotions whereas Skirt Browning just goes out there and she's like ready to serve <laughs> because she's from figure skating it's about the other people it's about the judges and it's about the audience so it's it's an interesting type of drag to think about um, how figure skating impacts that <laughs> You know what, it's the, there's two phases to when you go on stage. There is the person who's before you, they're performing for three minutes, and that's when I absolutely go into cardiac arrest, and I'm just trying to breathe. And then when their number finishes, you just have to put it on, 
Get that face ready, put your hands on your hips, be all of the attitude, and then just go out there and pretend like you're in your living room, killing it for you and your cat. It's really two, it's really two phases, because you have the one where you're like about to lose it, and then there's the one where you're just gonna give it and live. Uh, it's hard, it takes a lot of practice, and uh, it takes a lot of mental talk, um, because it is terrifying. And then, once you finish, then you feel like a superhero and all of that adrenaline is in your body and you could do anything, you could conquer the world. So that, that is the payoff moment. Um, once you are done and you, uh, and you had the best time of your life and so did everyone else. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna say it and maybe the universe will respond. Mick Jagger, hello. I'm uh, actually planning for this year a Mick Jagger drag number where I am going to be skirt browning as Mick Jagger doing Rolling Stone songs and uh, who knows? <laughs>